Hey everybody, it's me. It's your good buddy. Today I'm Lieutenant Colonel Thorne of the 69th New York Volunteers. And I want to talk to you today about the basic Civil War soldier outfit. Ready? Let's go. It's a soldier I am and I'm living the green With the boys of the army of fighting I been With my knapsack and gun wheresoever I be Sure it's union I fight for till Ireland is free Oh then let me be living or dying In society for the old Saddam sighing But the tyrant I'll still be defying In America's Irish Brigade in the seven days fight, your sure, eyes stood at my post, and each pop of my gun made some rebel a ghost. And whenever the word came to charge me, me so I made in some blackguard a bayonet hole. Oh, but that it's myself they were slighting, for the flag of the free I was fighting. And the slaughter I made was delighting in America's Irish Brigade. And we're back. Okay, see, look, I got Manny out. Manny's outfitted. He's a fine young soldier for the 69th New York. Uh, but for the next series of videos we're going to talk about is his name's not going to be Manny. It's going to be Owen McCauley. Because Owen McCauley enlisted in the 69th New York in August of 61. And uh, took part in a lot of the battles there. Brass needs to be shy there, young man. And, uh, well, he wasn't young. You weren't young when he enlisted, weren't you? Owen McCauley was 36 years old when he enlisted in the Army in 19, or 1861. Woohoo! 1861. 36 years old. He was married and had three children. Originally from Ohio, well, originally from Monaghan, uh, Ireland, came over, immigrated to the United States, was living in Ohio at the beginning of the war in 1858. And for some reason, Owen moved back to New York and in New York City and enlisted in the 69th in August of that year, right after Bull Run and the reorganization of the Army, when the 69th New York Militia reorganized into the 69th New York Volunteer Infantry. Now, Owen here today is dressed as your typical Union soldier, uh, let's say mid to late 62, uh, this is during the Peninsula Campaign, and he is wearing a four-button sack coat, a very nice uh, wool from Mr. Uh, Jarnigan. He's wearing blue, sky blue federal issue trousers. These are from Blockade Runner. He has got a Type 2 forage cap uh, from New Columbia. His leather gear, he's, wearing, he's got a 69 caliber box cartridge box on the back with a cartridge box plate and he's got his breast eagle he's wearing a waist belt with a 69 or a state of New York buckle although probably by 62 he was issued with a US belt buckle uh, he does have a cap box and he's got his bayonet scabbard what he's not wearing he's not wearing his haversack and canteen for the moment just for this display so we can see these things a little better he is wearing, carrying however a 1853 model Enfield 57.7 caliber rifled musket, not his smoothbore. Uh, we know that during the Peninsula Campaign, many of the members of the 69th New York picked up Enfield rifles for just a little bit more distance and accuracy on the field. They, they have returns in, in the, uh, the official records. And a lot of these weapons were picked up on the battlefield, either from fallen Union soldiers or from their, uh, from their opponents, the fallen Confederate soldiers. The 69 caliber smoothbore Springfield uh, was slightly less accurate range-wise, distance-wise, than the infields, and a lot of soldiers did pick him up. Uh, the bayonet is basically the same as what we showed you the other day. It is, you know, a big hunk of steel. I've had this one for about 25 years, and uh, when not on a rifle, slides into its uh, scabbard. So, 
Underneath this, Owen is wearing his federal issue fe uh, flannel shirt and a set of drawers and his socks. He is wearing his brogans today, or he's not wearing his brogans today. Manny the mannequin is slightly hard to dress. I don't know if you've ever worked in retail clothing stores. Putting all this crap on him is a pain in the butt. Shoes just don't go on their feet very well. So he is wearing socks today rather than his brogans. But we'll talk about his brogans, all right? So let's get you started with your basic clothing, shall we? All right. Um, Owen was issued with socks, and these are black, co black cotton wool socks. Uh, these are civilian model. These are actually modern civilian socks, which I find way more comfortable. Uh, <coughs> they would come in a variety of colors. Black is one of them. Um, gray, reds, whites. Socks were sent from home. It's really what you're going to find comfortable unless you want to do really hardcore stuff. And, and then, you're going to, then you're going to do that. Now your brogans, like we looked at these a little bit before. Um, pretty straightforward, straight lasts. Uh, Jefferson booties is what they're called. They would go on his little feeties. And then the underwear or, or drawers were long down to the pants and have a three button fly. They do have a tie in the back. And uh, these are made of linen or, or Honestberg or these are cotton blend. Uh, provided to us or purchased today from um, Blockade Quartermaster or blockade runner. The boots, these are my original boots that I bought back in, way back in 1988. These were Jarnigans and they're still holding up pretty good. And uh, these were issued two sets uh, every six months, more or less. Uh, soldiers talk about them wearing out and falling apart and basically what we call today being commando. But that's kind of what the drawers look like. They're fairly comfortable to wear, and um, really, they kind of protect you from the scratchy wool pants. You can see my dark blue pants. Usually, a, an officer would have a gold welt in the seam. I do not, uh, but that's just how it is. Okay, Mr. McCauley's undershirt is of flannel. This one is of gray. Issue ones were also in white. Is a three button placketed front with a collar. The cuffs are closed with a single button and gathered. And it is um, very typical of the shirts of the time period. Um, the issue shirt was worn, of course, uh, but you know, these being flannel, they're a little warm uh, at the best at times. So, Miss Hobbs, can I? Hobbs has joined us today for the filming. Reactors often will purchase a cotton version of the same shirt. This is also by Blockade Runner today. Um, it has a light washing, that's why it's wrinkled as bad as it is and hung out to dry. Three button front, collar, and here you can see the cuff detail a little bit better. But really that's just about it with, with shirts. Um, this cotton shirt is a lot more common in the re reenacting scene than the flannel. Um, and I would probably recommend you get the cotton to start with if you don't get a civilian shirt. Okay. And when we talked about civilian shirts, I was wearing one the other day, kind of showed it to you. My black and white striped one, also black, by Block Clay Runner. Uh, but really, shirts, if you're going to do an issue soldier, this is, the, this is the shirt that you're going to wear, okay? And this is what's going to look the best. It's going to be a little warm maybe, but in the cooler weather, it's going to be pretty nice. So, let's go on to something else. The next bit of uh, kit we're going to talk about is uh, the trousers, Blue Federal trousers. Now this is a pair from Jarnigan that I bought back in 1988. Uh, they're still very functional. They're kind of a heavy blue kersey. Uh, the interior is lined. Or, or the uh, is finished with white cotton, uh, heavy canvas cotton. Does have two front pockets, and it has a tie belt or tie uh, sizing in the back. Um, it does not have a watch fob pocket. 
not all of them did. And uh, five button fly done with 10 buttons. Now some of these buttons have come off over the years and I've replaced them with various other things and uh, which is very common. These were held up by the suspenders. And these are pretty good trousers. Uh, there's a C and J Jarnigan label. And, and size, mark size four, because I'm a kind of a big guy. Uh, and these are pretty good trousers. They're still pretty good. Um, they're not 100% accurate. The cuffs are done wrong. They were left unhemmed. And uh, you're going to do a little bit of research to see where these cuffs, why these cuffs are wrong. But they're pretty good trousers, pretty good starting trousers. Now, let's compare them to my blockade runner trousers that I got the other day. Okay. This is a little lighter weight of blue kersey. Uh, the cuffs are also done wrong, and they're rolled up for this particular piece. I'm going to have to fix this. Um, I want to put the right cuff on here, and eh, maybe I'll talk about that sometime. But the interior is is a little less ornamented than the uh, Jarnigans. This is all machine uh, uh, um, finished. It does have the tie back, like the original. This does have a watch pocket, however. And uh, it's a pretty good pair of trousers, really, for the first, for your first set of trousers. These aren't too bad. They run about $80, $86, I think, on Blockade Runner. Um, depending on how you want to get into the hobby, you can go with a higher quality trouser. But this isn't too bad, really, when you come, when you're really talking about it. The suspenders are all like we were talked about before. We're not issued. These are private purchase suspenders. I've repaired this front loop with a piece of leather, and it looks pretty good. Uh, they're not too bad. Now with Mr. McCauley here, or Private McCauley, wearing his trousers, you can see they're kind of a baggy fit, even on uh, the slender uh, young Mr. McCauley, who. Historically, my ancestor was 5'4", and about 130 pounds, which ironically ironically, was about the same size as my grandfather. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. But uh, pretty loose, pretty baggy, but allow, they're very comfortable to wear, uh, especially with the, underwear, with the drawers underneath them, kind of protecting you from the wool. I don't have a problem with it, but a lot of people do. So the suspenders held the trousers up. You can see here where the um, repairs were done. The very field common is something that you could do. Just a piece of leather cut, a couple holes put into it. This has lasted, this repair has lasted about 10 years, I guess, on this, in this particular pair of suspenders. I know they look pretty good. So now we're, we're pretty much, uh, yeah, yeah, we're starting to look there. Um, you know what? Let's put something on your head, shall we? This is that, uh, Bummer or forage cap from, um, well, this is a blockade runner cap, and it is a pretty decent cap. It, it is, uh, does have a wool brim stitched in, and with a check piece, it's pretty high, but this is one of the styles that was worn by the Federal Soldier. Uh, we did talk a couple of them. You do have this version. Uh, Regimental Quartermaster makes a copy. This is the, the, the officer's copy of it. There is a couple other pieces. I did show you my new Columbia. This is a Type 2. And uh, with a painted square or brim. Cinnamon. Oh, Cinnamon's here to talk to us again. What I was trying to show you in the last photograph was this maker's mark inside. So, let's remove this one for just a moment and push this one back on. And there we go. Now, the last little piece of uh, uniform that we want to talk about, and we'll wrap this session up, is that jacket, that blue jacket that's, that is so distinctive of the Union soldier. Now, I showed you a couple of them the other day. We have that uh, federal frock or federal sack coat, that four button sack coat. And this is a Jarnigan 
copy. Like I said before, it's kind of hard to see because it's dark blue on dark blue. But this is unlined. And uh, it's pretty light flannel. It's almost shirt weight flannel, which is accurate. And with the four buttons on the front, very, very good coat. Um, has a one single pocket on the interior. Like I said, we have this very, very farby looking thing on here. Uh, so it, it's just kind of a nice jacket. And this would be, if you're doing federal, if you want to do federal, this would, I would recommend a four button sack coat as your first purchase before you get something else. Because once you put this on, you're ready to go pretty much any reenactment. Um, the New York state coat is going to type fit you or, or put you into a, this is the only unit we do. Pretty much with like this hat, for example, with the 69th New York crest on it, this is pretty much the only thing I'm going to be doing with this hat. If I'm wearing a very plain uh, forage cap, then I can go and go to a reenactment and join whatever unit is out there and portray a generic federal soldier, which is kind of the push towards everybody doing. The specific impression, this one for an example, is um, it's good for displays, it's good for recruiting, and if we fight in a battle that the regiment was actually at, that's great, then we can be that. But you're really going to go for that basic soldier look, okay? All right. Let's get this jacket put on Mr. And now finally with Mr. McCauley in his federal sack coat. He has his uh, forage cap on at kind of a jaunty little angle. He's got his blue, light blue federal trousers. He's got his issue shirt on underneath. His issue drawers underneath. And he's wearing his brogans. And uh, yeah, you're ready to go. So uh, next episode, we'll start talking about the accoutrements and what to put on. We'll see you next time. Take care. Here, go bro. Oh, then let me be living on and on in society for the old Saddam Sarien. But the tyrant I'd still be defying in America's Irish beginning.